Our next speaker is Laura McHugh, and Laura is the HSC National Breastfeeding Coordinator for the last five years. And today, Laura is going to speak about the Breastfeeding Action Plan. Thank you, Denise. Um, and it is great. Happy National Breastfeeding Week to everyone. It's um, a busy week with lots of opportunities for sharing, I suppose, experiences, mothers' experiences, and there's certainly a lot of staff education and an awful lot of tea and cake going around the place. So it is, um, it's been a wonderful, I think, week of just connecting with mothers and with staff in person. And I think we're, I suppose, um, reflecting on that, that has been a great, just how important actually mothers meeting mothers and staff meeting staff has been actually really important um, throughout this week. Those of you that have heard me twice in the last two weeks, uh, may you may take this time now to have a cup of tea because it's going to be kind of a little bit more of the same. I'll try and change it up a little bit, but um, I suppose I am here to give an update, I suppose, on where we're at with the National Breastfeeding um, Action Plan. So um, first thing is this plan is extended until the end of next year. There are a number, I suppose, of outstanding actions with that. And um, it's really important, I suppose, to kind of keep the momentum with progress. So um, be rest assured we're not um, going anywhere um, with this um, with this action plan. So just one of the kind of what things I will kind of suppose just give a bit of an update on is a little bit of context about rates, where we're at with the significant investment on posts, um, a standardized infant feeding, breastfeeding education program that's under development. Um, we always want to touch on the code and the importance of our HTC policy in the marketing breast milk um, substitutes. Um, then talk about some of our um, breastfeeding services and our supports and our publications and websites that we are promoting, I suppose, in terms of the offering that's available to mothers through the HSC. And also I want to touch on um, the standards for infant feeding and maternity services um, on behalf of my colleague Claire, who can't um, be with us today. So um, I suppose, you know, when we think about rates, I suppose um, Ireland is often um, talked about in terms of having low rates. And certainly um, we, you know, we do feature at the bottom of the lead table around this. But I suppose I just what the reason I kind of want to just talk about rates a little bit is just kind of often it's a little bit hard, even for those of us who are in kind of um, the business of looking at tracking and benchmarks and that we're not always supposed comparing like with like. And there is, I suppose, variances and definitions and how we, I suppose, present rates um, um, is is different in different countries and the different methodologies here in Ireland. Our rates are based on contacts with each individual mother based on their um, contact with the maternity services or within the public health nursing services. So that's, I suppose, what we um, what we are about in terms of um, what the, what data you actually see, um, you know, coming from Ireland. Um, but I suppose there is a um, there is very variation how data is presented internationally, and that just makes I suppose more trickier and challenging. And um, you know when we're making reference to international, it's complicated by definitions, which we'll come back to talk to, timing, recall, um, methods of analysis and sampling. So um, I think it was one of, one of my pitches is that we should be really I suppose focusing on trying to um, do work on improving the quality and looking at um, improving rates within our own um, within our own areas. There's also I suppose a big um, consideration just in terms of um, the measurement of data um, when we're looking at um, definitions of whether we're tracking ex exclusive breastfeeding from birth or are we looking at point in time and there's a, a paper um, that we often refer to by Granger um, 2014 around that and we do um, we do take into both um, time points in Ireland. So in Ireland we have four current time points for recording our breastfeeding rates um, the, the newest um, metrics around breastfeeding rates are in hospitals, um, and that is produced with the National Women and Infants Health Programme report. So we have, shortly we will have three years data on that. We have 2019, 2020, and shortly 2021 report will be available. And for the first time on a national basis, um, hospitals have collected this data for a number of years, but the first time we will nationally, we will have access to what our breastfeed initiation rate is. So what's the, what's the number of mothers who are starting breastfeeding at the first feed um, after birth. And also I suppose there are nuances around that for our sick and our preterm babies, and that's also taken into account. So, and then we are also looking at tracking 
that experience throughout the hospital and we are measuring um, exclusive and non-exclusive breastfeeding on discharge from hospital. So we know typically that is anything from, you know, two days or, you know, between two and five days, depending on, um, you know, mode, um, you know, mode of birth. So um, that's, I suppose, an important quality improvement metric, I suppose, and it certainly gives us um, a truer sense of what our supplementation rate is in hospital and measuring that um, um, initiation of breastfeeding and discharge from hospital is also, I suppose, taking into account when we're looking at what that non-exclusive rate is, we're looking at people that have had a single supplement or maybe going home and combined feeding on discharge. So um, it's certainly it's um, a piece that we are tracking in terms of what actual practices are happening in hospital and what um, true behaviours, I suppose, in terms of um, what mothers um, have been doing in hospital. The National Perinatal the Statistics System reports then they have been out for um for at least a decade, if not more. Um, we are looking at exclusive and non-exclusive uh, breastfeeding rates on discharge from hospitals. So it's looking at that single point in time at actually what mothers are doing at that point in time in hospital. So there is differences in the discharge rates from hospital, and that's related to the definitions and partly, I suppose, also related to maybe some of the time points around the year, because the NPRS reports are a couple of years um, you know, behind us. We also have two key points in the community or um, our um, key performance indicators within the primary care service in the HSC are looking at breastfeeding at the first PHN visit, uh, which is typically takes place in 72 hours of discharge from hospital. And then also um, mothers are asked about breastfeeding at the three month developmental um, checkup. And you can access that data locally. It is on the HSC performance reports. Um, the National Prairie's Natal Statistic Reports are all come out um, and with the come out, they're produced annually. I think the, the 2019 report came out the start of this year and certainly the on the HSC website you will also get the National Women and Infants Health Program um, reports. So we would like to extend the metrics beyond um, three months but currently that's what's available um, to us on a national basis and again just to reiterate they are actual contacts with um, you know with mothers. So this is a little bit, I suppose, about what our rates actually look like in Ireland and what we are supposed talking about um, in some of our messaging this week, that there is a gradual increase in breastfeeding. We're noting about a 4.8% increase over the last three years, in particular within the public health nursing services at that first, um, at that first visit. What our MPRS data is telling us that um, breastfeeding rates are increasing with mother's age up to about the age of 39. Um, but as expect, as, as we've known, I suppose, for, for a while, and, and the trend is continuing, that mothers age less than 24, particularly less than 20, are less likely to be exclusively breastfeeding. Also, mother Irish-born mothers um, are improving um, exclusive breastfeeding rates, but that can't be said for our non-Irish mothers um, or non-Irish-born mothers. Um, mother, more portion of mothers from the UK, EU, Asia, and Africa have all shown a decrease in exclusive breastfeeding um, over the decade. I suppose when we're looking at the um, when we're looking at um, breastfeeding rates in at three months, there's about forty percent of babies that are um, that are continuing to breastfeed at um, at three months. Um, colleagues in the Rotunda have recently, I suppose, looked at their exclusive breastfeeding rates and the factors associated with that. So if you haven't read that paper, certainly it's um, it's just out in the last month or so, but just makes interesting reading, I suppose, in terms of how we challenge supporting um, mothers who need um, additional help around breast around breastfeeding and certainly ex um, to promote exclusive breastfeeding. Um, so that's mothers who are maybe have had expected to have planned serine section, gestational diabetes, um, obesity levels and some cultural um, you know, factors associated with that as well. Um, the next thing I wanted to just focus on that, um, as many of you will know, to the press and through, um, you know, um, media pieces and certainly within your own services, um, there has been significant investment, the largest ever in breastfeeding and infant feeding support in Ireland in the last two years. So the National Maternity Strategy and the Minister for Health have committed to 34 new posts in the last two years. So what that means is that every maternity hospital has had seen an, an increase in investment in, in lactation support. So now every hospital has at least one lactation consultant in post. Um, our larger units, you're looking at about four members of staff who are in dedicated roles to support lactation and each um, public health nursing service. So we have 32 public health nursing services throughout the country. Each one of those will have at least a 0.5 um, WT staff member working on the team. Um, so I suppose the, the, you know, the purpose of these posts is to to enable hospitals to and, and, and community services to really, I suppose, implement optimum care, infant feeding um, practices and standards that we know um, 
that we know are evidence based and within our are, are, are within our HSE guidelines. They're also really important to, in terms of supporting ongoing staff education and skills development. And um, these post holders as well are also I suppose, expanding the scale of offering within services. So we've seen a lot more um, availability of clinics or um, our regional support groups or online services um, and certainly expanding to ensure our NICU units are getting um, dedicated staff working in there to support mums who are separated from their babies. And even some of our larger hospitals have, have prioritised these post to work with larger general hospitals where, mom, where, where mums are even in, in a different hospital, but their babies continuing to receive, uh, receive that important colostrum and breast milk in those early days um, you know, and weeks. Obviously, these post holders are a specialist resource and they are a very valued member of the multidisciplinary team and will see mothers who are having breastfeeding cha um, you know, challenges. Um, our lactation experts are also um, champions for the implementation of the code of marketing of breast milk substitutes and certainly have a key role in, um, in ensuring that that um, it was all, all mothers receive the information and support that they need, regardless of their feeding method, and in terms of endorsing hate to see resources and ensuring that our hate to see facilities are, um, are not advertising breast milk um, substitutes and have a sort of role as well, I suppose, about supporting staff to ensure that we um, maintain um, compliance with that and reducing conflict of interest around um, you know, study days and you know, events and all that, and to make sure that they're free from commercial um, um, influence. So it's it's been this was a really positive move over the last while and i um, pleased to say about 20 of those 34 posts are in place um, and there's at least 15 of them um, you know in active recruitment at the minute um, so I know there's lots of interviews going on at the minute um, and lots of people have had recent start dates and that so we would aim to by the end of the year to have the vast majority of these posts in place and that has been a significant challenge with I suppose ongoing recruitment challenges within the HC particular nursing related um, you know grades and in the east of the country where Cost of living crises are being, um, I suppose, are being felt even um, even harder. And then within still COVID leave and sick leave and stuff like that. So um, these, it's very welcome that our our midwifery managers and our public health nursing managers are prioritising these posts in the context of wider recruitment um, and challenges within the HSC. So it's certainly a good news story that we will have that we have and will have na more nationwide availability for mothers that should they need extra care and um, that we will have free supports available to them um, in each service. Um, next thing I want to suppose touch base on this both ongoing skills and education development of staff. So our maternity services have for um, many, many years been running um, very routine and regular breastfeeding training programs, 20 hour programs and refresher training programs. And um, that's been a core part of suppose of implementing um, infant feeding policies within services. Public health nursing services to um, a lesser extent had, had access and availability of staff to deliver this training. So for the last number of years, I suppose we've been listening to feedback from services around the capacity to do um, you know, run training and also there's been lots of so new evidence around how we should train our staff um, and then the advent of blended learning so, um, and the WHO recently came out with um, an infant feeding education course as well so all that aside we have looked to develop a national standardized infant feeding education program for all people who are in contact with mothers and babies, particularly our midwives and our public health nursing colleagues, because they are the people that meet and take care of um, um, our mothers um, on a routine basis, you know, in the early weeks of life. So um, pleased to say that we have updated the e-learning pro program on HSC land. So now um, if you go into HSC land, you will now have four um, infant feeding modules to complete. So it's about three and a half hours to um, to um, complete in total three breastfeeding modules and one module on formula feeding and you complete the four of the modules to get us was a certificate of completion of um, the knowledge based as aspects of that training program. So we are looking at piloting the next phase of the training which is looking at skills based um, skills based um, practice skills practice um, in a classroom setting and then looking at um, clinical practice learning and um, where so staff members will be able to have the opportunity um, under the supervision of um, you know a uh, somebody who is an expert in that area to look at practicing key skills and practice around um, skin to skin and positioning attachment and hand expressing um, breast milk. So it's be, um, it will be this was a, a busy and exciting year around this and now we'll be looking at what's training the trainers and looking at making sure we have capacity throughout all of our um, CNMEs around the country to particularly to roll out this um, new updated um, education program for midwives and public health nurses in particular. 
Um, always, I suppose, when we're thinking about kind of breastfeeding, we want to I suppose, mention, I suppose, some of the issues around the um, the code of marketing and so certainly within our standards for um, infant feeding within um, within maternity services. And I just wanted to highlight a WHO report that came out during the summer, which I suppose kind of grounds us all about the um, the availability and the pervasiveness of infant formula marketing. And um, it's really important, I suppose, because this report references UK, um, the UK, which we will have very similar, um, a lot of similarities in terms of branding and um, commercial communications around formula. So um, depressingly, um, many, many mothers in the UK would have um, been exposed to formula milk advertising in the, um, in the UK. I think we can kind of say the same thing is here. Um, so even more importantly about how we, I suppose, endorse and we promote the, the evidence-based information that is available from HSC and FAI, FSI, FSAI sources. Also, I suppose it's kind of that it's, it's not going away, but certainly our, our healthcare staff, our doctors and midwives, our nurses, our dietitians are being targeted as well by the companies in many different ways. Um, and that has been borne out then, I suppose, in terms of the feedback from mothers about getting an endorsement for for, for a particular brands, um, for a particular product. Um, and that was kind of outlined in this report as well for about a third of the mothers were saying this healthcare staff had recommended a particular brand. So um, highlighting this, it just that this, well, the scale of the challenge around this is not going away. Way. And certainly we have our HSC policy in the marketing of breast milk substitute and a, and a guide for staff around how we should work within um, the code in terms of protecting ourselves and certainly protecting our, um, our mothers our, and our pregnant women um, from this. Some pieces, I suppose, then on a more positive nature around the code and that in Ireland, um, there is a bill currently going through the doll called the Online Medium Safety Regulation Bill. And should that be passed, um, we will see greater restrictions on the online and um, online advertising and certainly broadcasting um, advertising of formula made products. So that would be very welcome because a lot of that stuff jars at what we are promoting in terms of evidence based um, uh, messaging. Also, we're seeing, I suppose, positively, we're seeing um, a lot more services in the position and um, certainly in terms of delivery of care, in terms of supporting at-risk mothers in the antenatal um, period. And that has certainly helped around reducing formula supplementation rates um, um, in hospitals, certainly over the last year of kind of hearing about colleagues who are implementing quality improvement projects who are targeting mothers with gestational diabetes or previous challenges or plant cesarean sections and working with those mothers to um, provide them with skill support antenatally in terms of preparing preparing for breastfeeding and then in the early days in hospital to um, make sure that they that they get off to the best start um, as possible and that has been um, shown to reduce the instances of formula supplementation. Um, we've, we have seen some I suppose specific targeting of staff over the last while around um, formula make advertising in just terms of kind of e-learning training being offered to staff and um, products trying to get onto the hospital shelves and um, so that's just something for us all to kind of watch out for in terms of the various ways that um, the HSE services are being targeted um, in terms of the code. Also we're seeing some great leadership from some of our colleagues around talking about more and more about stepping away from any conflicts of interest with, um, um, with the formula um, industry so um, that's always very welcome to have more conversations and to support more staff to make those um, to make those decisions. So um, this is a slide where one of us will talk about some of the breastfeeding supports that are available for, um, um, for parents. So everyone knows my child is the HSE's platform for everything to do with pregnancy, early years, toddler years and beyond. And breastfeeding, breastfeeding is certainly front and centre um, in that. There are two main, I suppose, um, strands to the actual website that would that we actually spend a lot of um, investment on promoting is all of the free breastfeeding services that are available and there's a directory by county there where everything from um, anti classes breastfeeding clinics support groups maternity hospital contact details and the range of in-person um, and virtual offerings are being um, expanded so currently we've about 110 groups it's growing every week um, and people we were so we're always asking people to kind of keep the information up to date because it is, it is, I suppose, kind of prioritized in terms of sponsored posts and advertising. So we want to make um, mothers and um, healthcare staff aware of the supports available in their area. And these are HSE supports, volunteer-led supports by Leslie, Quidu and Friends of Breastfeeding. And these are very 
popular and I suppose, you know, evidence based supports that we want to point mothers to to let them know that there is help out there and not to see, hesitate to seek it out. Um, I was at a, um, a local breastfeeding group here in Clare this morning and it was really nice to go into the room and meet mother um, who was pregnant and this is her, she do a baby shortly, but this is her second time coming to a breastfeeding group before her before her baby, um, you know, arrives. And I suppose it's really important that we that we kind of advertise that and that these are supports that people can also attend in the antenatal education period. Also, we have a range of breastfeeding content on the website and all that information has been recently updated and we always welcome new content on it. Um, but it's, again, it's kind of evidence-based information and advice around um, what to expect um, around breastfeeding and early days advice. There's an Ask the Expert service available Monday to Friday, um, 10 to 3, where you can live chat with an IBCLC, ask any of your breastfeeding questions or outside of those hours, you can email and you'll get a response within 24 hours. Again, another very popular um, service uh, for parents just some activity in terms of just website tracking and kind of clicks on click to view pages so the my child site, site has seen about 2000 2.8 million visits in the first six months of this year and some of the pr top breastfeeding pages that people are interested in is about how much milk to express taking medications positioning attachment combination feeding restarting feeding and how to tell if my baby is getting enough milk so many of the issues and challenges that we've something we talked about today already but um you know that we know that mothers are looking for information on so there um, i suppose it's good that they are contacting the hsc sites for some um support and advice around that we also have a number of publications um that that do get updated very regularly. Some of the two recent ones are the Breastfeeding Good Start and Life booklet that all mothers get when they're pregnant. We have done a similar resource for um, working with Pave Point around breastfeeding information for traveler mothers. Um, last year, we updated the publication on breastfeeding expressing for your premature and sick baby. So any babies that are separated from their mums or that, that they'll get in contact, that they'll be in contact with the NICU staff and to get them, I suppose, hand expressing and using pumps and what, and, you know, and um, how to support breastfeeding when the journey is quite different from a normal term healthy baby. Um, the resources for staff that we kind of put to point to is the reflection guide, I suppose, about how to work within the code in terms of looking at the different opportunities in terms of how the industry can try and influ influence um, healthcare staff um, and by virtue of that, then in terms of getting um, their messaging out to um, out to parents. And I know Fergal mentioned this already, but again, to highlight the and um, the resource in St. James's in terms of um, the breastfeeding and lactation advice and this time last Last year, the update of the bulletin for breastfeeding lactation, that's certainly um, a popular evidence based resource for people to refer to. So um, finally, I wanted to suppose, touch on the baby friendly initiative. So Mar in May of this year, um, after a number of um, after a number of years work, we uh, published our national standards for infant feeding and maternity services. Um, and this is under the auspices of the Women and Infants Health Programme. And we are now in, so in starting the implementation phase of that. So this is where we have reviewed the practices of infant feeding and looked at previous standards in this area and aligned them with um, the quality improvement program HICWA that um, all maternity services are um, very familiar with and they work under that in terms of implementing the national standards for maternity um, for safe and better maternity care. So we have 11 standards across eight themes and we have a national lead appointed within the national in women and infants health program Claire Kennedy and really important I suppose that these standards are aligned with other implementation processes within maternity services and the women and infants health program and this is supposed to I suppose, support and enable hospitals who are being, I suppose, you know, um, met with trying to make sure they are delivering optimum care with many areas, including infant feeding. So certainly there is um, a lot of thought and I suppose consideration going into how implementation works across many of the standards and looking at aligning um, self-assessment and monitoring and supportive processes um, um, across that. Um, and one of the main themes we are looking at, I suppose, in implementing the National Standards for Feeding Maternity Services is getting all 19 hospitals units um, on board with this. And certainly the level of uh, the investment of the infant feeding post and lactation has been aligned to that. So certainly we want to support and I suppose, enable units to, um, you know, to carry out all of the changes that they know are, you know, are needed and to support each other in terms of doing that in terms of sharing information. 
There's an um, infant feeding lead for, I'm going to be set up, many of our lactation consultants meet informally and lots of other different groups. There will be, I suppose, a, a more formalized infant feeding forum set up to um, support the implementation of these standards. Again, sharing information and strategies for implementing changes. There's lots of models of good practice happening within units. We certainly want to share that learning and, um, and look at opportunities for collective working as well. Um, and also because you know, reduce duplication um, of effort. Claire will be available, I suppose, for in-person support with hospitals, and there's certainly a kind of a, um, you know, a real drive around that, around enabling and really supporting units. Um, self-assessment is going to be the initial phase of implementation with this, and there's self-assessment resources um, being developed where um, very people are very familiar with um, staff and staff and mothers interview tools and based on um, based on the infant feeding standards. And also then I suppose there's kind of looking at criteria across the eight teams and the 11 standards that if you're looking at, you know, within our services, what, what you know, what do benchmarks look like from, from a management and, and organizational level and people will score themselves, I suppose, you know, against those eight themes. Um, this will be an annual process. There will be, I suppose, lots of support ongoing in between that. Um, and then kind of to, to go alongside that, so we have the National Infant Feeding Education Programme, which will be rolled out within all maternity and community um, and healthcare services. And there will be a multidisciplinary oversight group, I suppose, set up as well to enable, um, so just to provide steering and direction towards implementing these um, new standards. So that's just a very whistle-stop tour of some of kind of reflections on the national plan for um, over the last week. So thanks, Denise, for the opportunity of talking to people today.